In the Nevada desert, groundbreaking progress has been made to convert propellants into fertilizer. The project is being conducted jointly by Arctech and Dan Zimmerman at the U.S. Hawthorne Nevada Army Depot. Arctech's new technology, ActoDemil, recycles propellants directly to a usable fertilizer product. Most of the propellant chemicals, such as nitrocellulose, nitroglycerin, nitroguanidine, TNT, RDX, and HMX are primary nitrate esters and contain substantial nitrogen. Our Acto Demil technology is designed to destroy the explosive characteristics and capture the nitrogen using our Actosol humic acid. We developed this breakthrough technology and systematically scaled it from the laboratory from gram quantities to the processing of hundreds of pounds of energetics at the Hawthorne facility. This technology is so unique that Arctec was awarded U.S. and international patents within months of application, including U.S. patent method for safely disposing of propellant and explosive materials and for preparing fertilizer compositions on July 23, 1996. Arctex demilitarization conversion process, Acto Demil, is a story of American ingenuity to convert a problem into a resource. The story begins during World War II, when the U.S. built several ordnance plants to supply nitrogen compounds for munitions. By 1943, the output from the plant exceeded military needs. Since then, the U.S. has built up a large stockpile of conventional ammunition to maintain its armed forces against any aggression. With the demise of the Cold War, demilitarization has become a vital mission to dispose of obsolete ammo in an environmentally friendly, safe and cost-effective manner to make space for new ammo critical to maintain U.S. Armed Forces preparedness. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The U.S. currently stockpiles about 3 million tons, for which the Army is the custodian and the Army Industrial Command is the lead manager. Of this 3 million tons of stockpile, 400,000 tons is the excess amount as defined in B5A, which is the obsolete stockpile for disposal. It is anticipated that B5A stockpiles will reach over 840,000 short tons by year 2001. These obsolete stockpiles are distributed at various depots around the country. The objective is to dispose of 100,000 tons B5A stockpile a year to adjust to a decreasing base count due to base realignment and closure and result in diminishing stored space. The cost of disposing of 100,000 tons stockpile per year is about $100 million. Because of these high costs, the Army is seeking new demilitarization approaches, which are cost-effective and environment-friendly, approaches known as r cubed for Recover, Reclaim, and Reuse. The traditional approach to dispose of ordnance is open burning, open detonation. However, open burning, open detonation does not allow for recycling of resources. Therefore, the Joint Demilitarization Testing Program was established by Congress to develop environmentally acceptable, safe, and efficient alternatives to open burning, open detonation. Artec's approach for converting propellants into fertilizer meets the r cubed standards and will enable the Army to reduce soaring storage and surveillance costs and will produce usable fertilizer to meet our continuing demand for all kinds of vegetation. Arctec is successfully demonstrating the ACTA DML approach at the Hawthorne Army Depot. The denitrification process is accomplished by hydrolyzing the explosive or propellant compounds with a solution of Actosol humic acid extract. The humic acid extract serves to fix the free nitrogen evolved. Any ammunition gas released, particularly from triple base propellants, is captured in a scrubber and formulated in the product. The Actosol fixed nitrogen is then available directly to plants as slow-release nitrogen and can directly replace nitrogen derived from urea or other sources. The carbonaceous material remaining from the denitrification process is non-energenic and is taken up in the humic acid matrix. It is immediately available to plants as a carbon source. Arctic completed the design and fabrication of a transportable Actodemal technology unit. This unit has a capacity of recycling one ton of energetics per day. The main process units are assembled on a 40 foot by 8 foot skid 
and includes the reactors with mixers, the energetic feed system, various pumps to move liquids, tanks to store various chemicals required in the process, and the electrical and instrumentation items. A separate fluid cooler chiller unit is integrated with the main process kit. This unit is designed to maintain the required temperatures during the active demur process. In addition, a wet scrubber system is integrated with the main skid to treat ammonia and nitrogen dioxide that are evolved during the active demur process. The final emissions from the scrubber system meet the required regulatory mandates. The propellants required for each batch are loaded into a hopper and from there are fed through a vibratory feeder tray and onto a bucket elevator for final discharge into the reactor. In the actodemal process, the feeding of propellant can be monitored by a camera that is mounted close to the unit. Now we would like to show you another application of the technology. Here the actodemal technology is being used to properly dispose of empty projectiles from autoclave melt-out operations. In this approach, the projectile shells which are loaded onto cages are first decontaminated to remove any residual energetics that might be present on the surface of the projectiles. After decontamination, the projectiles are rinsed, dried and then cut into two pieces so that they can never ever be used as an improvised explosive device. Following the effective demilitarization, the empty projectile shells can be recycled at a metals smelting facility. The decontamination tank is rectangular and made of stainless steel. A suction and discharge header, a heat exchanger and a pump are integrated to circulate the heated AHAX through the tank. In the decontamination step, the cage containing the empty projectiles are slowly lowered into the decontamination tank using a hoist and trolley system. The decontamination tank contains the proprietary AHAX reactant which accomplishes the complete destruction of any TNT that might be present on the surface of the projectiles. The cages are lowered at an angle to ensure that the empty projectiles are completely submerged in the AHAX reactant which has already been heated to an initial temperature of 195 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius well below the boiling point of water. After the cages have been immersed in the AHAX reactant for approximately one and a half hours, they are slowly removed from the tank. The cages are designed to hold projectiles of different sizes ranging from 57 mm to 155 mm in diameter. In all, five cages are treated at a time in the decon tank. As they are being removed from the decontamination tank, the cages are tilted at an angle to ensure that all of the AHAX has been completely drained from the projectiles. The completely drained cages are then slowly moved to the next step, which is rinsing of the projectiles. Rinsing is accomplished in a two-tank system. Fresh water flows from one tank to the other to provide counter-current rinsing. From the decontamination tank, the cage is lowered slowly into the first rinse tank at an angle to ensure that it is completely submerged in the water. After a quick immersion, the cage is removed slowly from the first rinse tank tilt it to ensure that all of the water is drained out of the projectiles and is then ready to be lowered into the second rinse tank. The same hoist system is used to lower the cage into the second rinse tank. And again, after a quick immersion, the cage is removed from the second rinse tank and is then ready to be fed into the drying chamber. The drying chamber is a totally enclosed tunnel equipped with a moving conveyor in which forced air is directed through a series of nozzles to dry the projectiles. After the cage is lowered into the chamber, it moves slowly through the tunnel. After about 8 to 10 minutes, it the end where it is then deposited onto a gravity conveyor. The final step is the deformation of the projectiles and this is accomplished by using a bandsaw to cut the projectiles into two pieces. 
the dried projectiles are manually loaded onto the bandsaw and held in place with a quick clamp operating vise. A semi-automatic mitering saw then cuts the projectile into two pieces. The cut pieces are collected and loaded onto mobile bins for transportation to a smelter for recycle. Dick Schmidt, professor here at Virginia Tech. In 1850, Justin von Liebig, the father of agriculture chemistry, postulated that the exhausted soil was due to uh, nutrient removal. Since then, crop improvement has been obtained by applying fertilizers. Most of the 16 essential elements required for plant growth must be obtained from the soil and must be replenished. The elements that need to be replenished in larger quantities are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. At Virginia Tech, we tested the impact of the end product from the academia process had on greenhouse cultured plants. The results show that the product was comparable to that of commercial fertilizer. No evidence of phytotoxicity was obtained in spite of high rates of fertilizer application. Preliminary results indicate that the architect product is a viable fertilizer. Global Environmental Solutions evaluated the safety and risk analysis of the resulting fertilizer product. Their results showed that the product is insensitive to both impact and friction and that it is no longer energetic. Arctex Actademil technology results in a usable fertilizer product and has multiple applications. Arctex Actademil technology results in a usable fertilizer product that is non-energetic and therefore safe for handling. Arctex Actademil process complies with all of the industrial environmental regulations and provides a swords to plowshares technology. The new technology meets extensive EPA munitions rules which rigidly regulate the use of any debris or unexploded ordnance and which are subject to Resource Conservation and Recovery Act RECRA Subtitle C requirements. In summary, benefits derived from Arctic's approach include propellants are recycled into saleable fertilizer and thus lower demilitarization costs, active demil complies with environmental regulations, and active demil assists in maintaining readiness of the U.S. forces. <laughs>